you're able to run a new fuel station, you don't necessarily need to have any prior experience. To run a fuel station is like any business. You need to have certain specific procedures that you do on a daily, monthly, weekly, and even on an hourly basis. It's all about managing the process. There's quite a bit of information that the Department of Energy will need when you apply for, for a new license. But the top four documents that you would need is your zoning certificate, your traffic count, your entrances, as well as your environmental um, approvals that needs to be in place before you can even apply to Department of Energy. One of the most important things to realize is that there's a difference between a site license and a retail license. A site license gets issued by the Department of Energy on a specific piece of land that also have a linked retail license. The retail license is issued to the operator of that station on that specific land. Then at that stage, you are allowed to retail from that site. That means you're allowed to dispense to customers to a maximum limit of 1,500 liters per transaction. Zone property refers to what is the classification of that piece of land at the municipality under which it falls at that stage. It needs to be classified as for retail, for fuel retail. So it needs to be classified as that to be able to get a site license on that specific property. A traffic count is a process that's been followed or a count that's been done by an engineer on how much traffic is traveling past the site during specific operating hours that's envisaged for that specific site. It makes differences in regards to which direction the traffic is traveling, what type, light vehicles, light commercial, industrial trucks, tankers, freight and so forth, get split out into this whole report. From that, you can actually make a very accurate calculation on what is the potential of that specific site. To get environmental authorization is quite a process depending on certain classifications of which how much fuel you would like to keep on the property is probably one of the most important ones. It is always advisable in these circumstances to rather consult environmental consultants than try and do it your, yourself. Um, they make the process a lot quicker, a lot easier and can give you the best possible information up front. The average time what it would take to set up a new station is very dependent on the circumstances. But if you want to do a thumbs up on it, probably to get those first four important documents in place is probably going to be between 18 to 24 months. Then going into the Department of Energy application process, there you're probably looking at another 12 to 18 months. And construction is quite the quick one on all of that. You'll probably get it done within 12 months. So all in all, you're probably looking three to five years from now if you start today. The biggest hidden cost in a fuel station is not necessarily hidden. It's just something that people don't remember. Working capital is extremely important. You need to have the money to put product underground to be able to sell it. Today, one load is just below 600,000 rand a load. The most important thing for a fuel station owner on a daily basis is to monitor stock. You need to monitor dry stock as well as your wet stock. So that goes with all reconciliations in regards to what stock is left, what has been sold, how much money you've received and so forth. You need to do it per shift so that you can put the responsibility with the correct people. Who can you contact to assist with your documentation? Your first port of call would be 
the website of the Department of Energy. There it will probably stipulate those four documents as well that you need to, to get into place. The moment that four documents is in place, there's quite a bit of consultants out there and we as Gasped will also be able to assist them with the process going forward to get the retail and site license in place.